Okay, so at nine months old, Carrot's heard the stop whistle a lot of times. When she's been on the lead, um, within a very short time of her learning to sit, I was blowing the stop whistle when she sat indoors, outside, on walks. So she'd probably heard it several hundred times already. Now I want her to transfer to stopping when she's not at my side and not in control. And I start that doing some off the lead and start running and stopping. I'll show you what I mean. Carrot, heel, come, Brr, good girl. Heel. Heel, good girl. Heel. Good girl. Heel. Very good. Okay, now the lead off. Carrot, heel. Carrot, heel. Good girl. Good girl. Very good. Good girl. Good girl. Heel. Heel. She has to be snappy at sitting. It's no good if she walks half a dozen more paces and slowly sits down or doesn't sit properly. If she doesn't sit properly, she'll get a correction from me. Carrot, heel. What a good girl. Heel, heel. Come, heel. If they don't walk close to you when they're out in a wide space, which is a common problem, do lots of left turns. It's much easier to keep them with you. Heel, good girl. And always speed up if they lag. Carrot, heel. See what happens on a right turn? So I'm going to speed up. Come on, good girl. Heel. What a good girl. Very good. Good. That's a start. Okay, so Carrot's learnt the stop whistle. She does know what it means, but transferring that to some obedience, listening and reacting to it when she's a distance from me and free and busy doing something and ultimately seeing something she'd like to chase, my word, there's a lot of work to do. So I start off, she stops nicely by my side. I'm going to start casting her off and stopping her when she's fairly close to me. You don't want to get in the habit of stopping them the second they go out all the time because that will make them reticent to hunt on that initial cast. So as always, there isn't a rule, keep a balance. But I'll show you what I mean. And if she doesn't stop fairly promptly, I'm going to get out to her. And because she's a nine month old dog, she might well think that she's going to run off. This is all of the challenge that we face as HPR owners in keeping the respect and the slight um, having them a little bit in awe of you but not making them afraid of you and it's really important to get that message right at this age because she's really starting to stretch the elastic now and uh, you know I'm caught out quite often and I've done it a lot with different dogs so uh, you know it, it's, it is hard it's a difficult time but read your dog your body language they are they are reading all the time much more than your whistle and you've got to soften your body language when you want them to come in and you've got to face up to them shoulders back and be you know firm and a bit intimidating when you're cross with them and they need to read that difference and you have to be quick in changing it depending on how the dog is reacting let's hope that something happens out there and you'll see what i mean carrot he good girl Brrr. carrot hi on hi on Good girl, very good. So I get straight out to her, very good, very good. And she's having a little treat. Carrot, sit. Very good, good girl. Hi on. Very good girl, very good. Oh, you are a good girl, very, very good. Heel. Mix up with a little bit of a 
recipients so they don't just get hotter and hotter and expand on the space all the time. These are very early days. It has to be controlled. Carrot, heel, heel, hey, come here. Very, very good, very good. Okay, so she wasn't re responding to me at all. I gave her a sharp ticking off, which I hope the microphone didn't blow your eardrums out. She left what she was doing straight away. Hey, sit, and came in, and I was able to cast her off again. When they come in, if they're out for free, try not to make them come in and sit and be intimidating them a lot. Bring them in, the best thing you can do is cast them out again. Sit, that's it.